Bowyer, a man with more than 20 years flying experience under his wing, so to speak, yes. saw something extraordinary which later made those headlines as he flew at 4,000 feet near Guernsey. And so did quite a few of his passengers, and so did the pilot of another aircraft that was flying nearby, flying over Sark. And Captain Bowyer is here now to, to tell his story. Thank you for coming in and thank you for speaking out because I know from private conversations I've had over the years with the commercial pilots, sometimes when I'm up in the cockpit with them, they do see things mm -hmm. um, and, they, and they tend not to report them because they don't want to be laughed at or have their careers jeopardised. Exactly um, right. So why have you decided to speak out about this? Well, I, I didn't actually decide uh, to speak out at all. Actually, the press <laughs> asked the company, which I work for, mm -hmm. um, to what I mind doing interview and the company being uh, quite, quite a forward-thinking firm. Uh, had no objection. In fact, uh, pretty much actively encouraged it. So that's what? how it happened, really. Well, how did the press get hold of it then? Did, did passengers? I don't know. I really don't you, know. You weren't the only person who saw no. this phenomenon, that's what, right. were you? There, no. there were some passengers who saw it, and yeah. also another pilot. Yes. Simultaneously. Well, look, let's. We've got an artist's impression that we knocked up here this afternoon on our, our computer paint box. Um, is that kind of what you saw? Is that a uh, reasonable? No. <laughs> oh, well, it's the best we did. Oh, be you, honest, yeah. You, well, hold that picture. Well, you, 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 you describe it, it to us. Well, it was a, a brilliant uh, yellow object. The, the brightness you've got there, about two-thirds from left to right, um, you know, it was a graphite grey uh, section, if you want to call it a fuselage. We don't know yet what it was. Uh, we're looking into it. And how big was it? Uh, difficult to say once again, but I saw it from 50 miles away. So um, any object from 50 miles away must have been fairly enormous. Well, what, about a mile long? It's possible, yeah. Did it it's, move at all? It probably didn't move, but uh, there, I had uh, the great opportunity the other day from Jersey Air Traffic Control uh, visiting their radar uh, room and uh, some interesting um, traces, let's put it that way, from, from the radar. Uh, really? Indicate that there's a possibility that they did pick up on, from both Guernsey and Jersey radar uh, traces, uh, spurious traces they call, um, for around about 55 minutes. How uh, long did you see it for? I saw it in total for 12 minutes. Can I show you a picture? Um, mm. this is, I'm sure you've seen this picture. It's of lenticular clouds, um, a very rare but, but known <coughs> formation. This was yep. taken some years ago. Could it have been something like that? Could it have been some very, very strangely formed cloud? Uh, no. Well, I think highly unlikely. Uh, I've seen lots of lenticularis in my time, um, mm -hmm. um, but just doesn't look like a cloud. Well, you've yeah. seen a lot of clouds yeah. over the last I also had the opportunity of looking at this or these objects, there were two of them, mm -hmm. uh, through binoculars, uh, ten times magnification, and uh, in my view, a very definite object uh, in, in inside controlled airspace, uh, which shouldn't have been there. What happened? Did, did you simply lose contact with it? Did it disappear? Well, I, I was it? landing, I was, it was a general flight from, uh, from Southampton, going mm -hmm. to Alderney, and the only reason I lost sight of it uh, was because I descended through a haze layer, which uh, mm -hmm. is fairly common yeah. in that area, and having descended through the haze layer, I couldn't, uh, couldn't see it anymore, but it's almost certainly still there. Did well, the other pilot know. who was flying over Sark, the, the island of the Sark, did mm -hmm. he report it in exactly the same terms? Yes, because it was sighted, or they were sighted in, uh, in, in side-controlled airspace, mm -hmm. Uh, the, the pilot's under a legal obligation, and I suspect this is where uh, the, the press so come from. And yeah. uh, he's, he's filed a report exactly the same as I have. Um, well, let's, show you, let's show you a couple of pictures from, from the UFO file books. These are, these are genuine UFOs in the sense that no one's ever been able to explain what they are, but they, they, they happen. They're not fakes. Well, that's, uh, that's over well, New Mexico. Say, that's, uh, very similar to is the it? sort of thing that I saw, yeah. Well, that and, was, and my passengers. That was famously. Uh, I haven't seen taken over before. New Mexico right. um, in 1957, and okay. it's not a cloud. That much we do know. I don't know what it is, but it's but not they, a cloud. Not a cloud. Uh, analysis mm. showed that it wasn't a cloud, but they don't know what it was, uh, mm -hmm. hence UFO. Yeah. This is one from Russia uh, in 1989. Again, analysis shows it's a genuine object. It's not a cloud. There is a cloud above it, a faint one, but uh, that object is not a cloud. Again, is that something? Um, well, I'd say the object I saw was, was a very brilliant uh, yellow color. Much brighter color. Than that. Yeah, much brighter. It's emitting that light. Good. It was emitting. You think it was no, emitting? Think, uh, well, it, well, there was there was cloud above it and all the way down to Guernsey. And, so it uh, couldn't have been reflecting not, not sunlight. Reflect, then. Yeah. Well, that was that was what I first thought before I looked at it through the binoculars. That uh, th there's a lot of vineries called vine greenhouses in Guernsey, and uh, the sun may have been reflecting from one of these vineries to the aircraft. They, you often see them in France as well uh, on the way down to the to Channel Islands, mm. and uh, they because the aircraft moves position and these the reflections are fixed in place, they often disappear. They always disappear. If you this to, one didn't disappear, it just stayed stationary. If you had to take an instinctive guess, and I'm saying it's guess, so I'm not asking for professionals because how could you possibly know? Would you say that it was something of this planet or something from outer space? Extremely difficult. I mean, uh, I think a few years ago you interviewed Dr. David Clark on a very similar sort of yes, thing. Did, yeah. About four years ago, I spoke to him today. He's in, in charge of a team that's looking into this at the moment. Um, I have been asked a question by the press, and my simple answer was uh, I don't think it's from around here. 
Um, okay. I can't speculate any further than that. But there is some information which is now being looked at, and uh, hopefully better come back one day and give you an answer to this. But at the moment, it's, well, I that, it's, an, that, it's an unknown. When, when you fly now, I mean, do you have a sort of slightly heightened awareness of what may be going on <laughs> around you? Uh, I think, yes, definitely. Yeah.